up you guys so I know it's been a while since I've done a video on this my car and I wanted to kind of do an updated video and walk you around all of these significant changes that have gone on to this machine over the past two years since I last posted an updated video uh, on this thing so I know a lot of you have been, have been waiting for it have been asking for it wanting to see the changes and aesthetically you can see the huge difference that this car has had over the past two years since I last made a video. So I'm going to walk you through all of the different changes that have been made onto this machine and why this is actually better than my old GD body WRX. So thanks for watching, stay tuned, and enjoy the show. Okay, so first things first is you're going to kind of see the aesthetics of the car have changed quite a bit, not only from the front in the wheels and the big wing on the back but it's just overall the aesthetics of this car have changed drastically over the past two years so I'm gonna kind of walk you through all the different changes and we're gonna start right up here at the front of the car and we're gonna kind of work our way back and so the first thing you'll notice is on my last video I didn't have the front lip on it now I did have a front lip before uh, but I didn't have it on at that particular period of time on uh, my last video that I did. This particular time, I actually do have the front lip on it, and yes, those are some canards that I put on the front bumper of the car, and that's really because on the narrow bodies here, there's really um, nothing there. It's very bland front bumper. So adding a little style, um, whether they're functional or not, doesn't really matter. Uh, but adding a little bit of style to the front of the car is essentially what I was going for. To give it kind of the look of being an aggressive uh, race car kind of look to it. So moving on to the hood of the vehicle, yes, it is a carbon fiber hood scoop uh, that you can see there. Um, really no main functional advantage to it other than just carbon fiber because it looks cool. Um, the reason I did that was because the original hood scoop was sun faded really bad and the cost of getting a carbon fiber one to repainting it was pretty much exactly the same and I figured the carbon fiber one just kind of looked a little bit nicer on the car. The wheels that are on here, though they're old, and I mean they are old, are a set of inky RS7s. They are 17 by 7.5 plus 35 offset. Uh, wheels on 235-45 uh, 17 tires. Um, really nothing fancy to them. They're old. They're from another car. Not gonna lie, I got them for free uh, through a trade, so I'm not complaining about it one bit. But they do, I think they look good with the car. They could be bigger, but I like the way they look with the car. Um, obviously the suspension has not changed at all. It's still uh, Petters Springs on KYB Excel G struts, uh, which is where we get the stance that we're looking at right here. Uh, so that hasn't changed uh, at all. It's mainly just some body panel moldings that have changed. As you can see, I've got some side skirt extensions right here. These are actually for a wide body uh, WRX. They do fit. They do work. Um, I think they just kind of fit the rear section the way that I was trying to get this to work uh, by having the little veins to kind of sit up a little bit on the rear of the car. It just kind of makes it look a little bit more sporty. Again, it's a narrow body, so kind of a bland body and doing little things to kind of make it just a little bit more exciting uh, can kind of go a long way. And the same thing on these rear pieces here. These were uh, just generic side skirt extensions that I cut down. Uh, to fit the, the body of the car and basically flip them backwards uh, to kind of give them a nice look. And it's really brought out the appeal, in my opinion, of the entire car from front to back. Try to get a good angle here. I just, I really think that it's really brought together the car front to back aesthetically. And then on the back, you can see we have this huge, 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 uh, I think it's a Varys style wing uh, on the back of it. Uh, it's full carbon fiber. 
all the way around. Uh, fitment is a little tight uh, for a replica wing, uh, but it is adjustable. I can adjust the middle piece uh, to pitch up a little bit more. I have it in its lowest setting right now because I don't really want to have all of that drag on the car. Uh, but that's just what it looks like right there. Uh, one of the pieces that I've wanted for the car for a very long time and I just went ahead and made the purchase for it and I haven't looked back. So um, just really, really love that wing. I just love the way it looks on the back of the hatch. I've always liked it and uh, finally got around to purchasing it. So uh, aesthetic, but also functional right here. You'll see, and I, I know you saw it on the other side, but yes, that is Brembo brakes on the front of it. Uh, it is using 04 STI uh, rotors, and then the calipers are four piston Brembo calipers. Um, really super easy install. These are actually uh, remanufactured Brembos that are for the STI. So these are STI calipers. Uh, they've just been remanufactured and powder coated red um, and I haven't had any issues they don't leak uh, the pads on them are just a set of uh, performance ceramic pads and then on the back is just standard WRX brakes uh, eventually those are going to get upgraded but really wanted to get uh, better front brakes considering that's where most of your braking force comes from uh, is from the front end of the vehicle so uh, part of the reason why I got those uh, is because of looks and the other part was performance wise uh, I've done some High performance driving that's really kind of focused on the um, brakes a little bit more and that's part of the reason why I upgraded those was better braking, uh, better performance. Uh, the exhaust, same exhaust, out the back, SRS, 3 inch, N1, single exit exhaust, that hasn't changed. Um, a lot of stuff has been changed in the engine bay and the performance of the vehicle. And first, I would like to show you that right there. So that is an STI six speed that is in here. The drivetrain has been completely swapped out of a 2009 STI hatchback. Ironically enough, same color as this car. Uh, but it came out of a 2009 STI hatchback, um, so it is the six-speed. I do not have the DCCD hooked up, so it is in its open mode, uh, which is what it defaults to when there's no power running to it, so it stays in an open uh, mode. But it does have the R180 rear div. Uh, it used regular WRX front axles. It uses the STI rear axles. You don't have to swap the hubs. Uh, but everything just bolts right on the car and didn't have any issues with it and man It's probably one of one if not the best upgrade you could throw on this car is to do the six-speed manual transmission It is just phenomenal Absolutely phenomenal how much of a difference uh, that transmission makes so uh, yes STI six-speed is in this car and partially because I was a little afraid of the power that I'd be putting down. And I didn't want to break it. So, why not? Alright, so now we're going to get underneath the hood. Because just about everything underneath here has changed. Well, almost everything underneath here. Alright. So the first thing you'll notice is the big intercooler in the back, and I'll get there in a second. So some things that haven't changed is it still has the uh, Cobb SF intake. Uh, it is with the aftermath hose. So that has stayed the same. That part has not changed. It does have the Grim Speed three-port boost control solenoid, which is something that wasn't on in my last video. Uh, it is going up to this massive process west verticooler which is just insanely massive I mean this thing is compared to my hand I mean it is a thick 
core that's on here and it does a fantastic job um, keeping the intake temps cool. It's probably one of the best top mount intercoolers you can get on the market. And why I didn't go front mount, uh, one, to kind of retain some of the factory uh, pieces, uh, but uh, for my particular power levels and what my goals are, I mean, top mount intercoolers do a uh, fantastic job nowadays, especially if you go with a Grim Speed or a Process West like this one. Uh, so of course you got the Process West Shroud, which has a nice weather stripping around it to kind of seal the air in. Um, really awesome piece, very well constructed, very well thought out. Um, now, uh, something that was a little trick, uh, that particular intercooler, when you order it, does not mount up to an STI six speed. They do make a bracket for it, but you gotta import it from Australia, so it's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, but if you get the right bracket from Process West, it does bolt up to the STI six speed, uh, and it works out really, really well. So that is pretty awesome. Uh, we do have, you see the SPT strut tower brace here. One of the very few that actually fit behind the vertical-er. Uh, so it's one of the very few, and ironically enough, factory Subaru part. So kind of shocking because a lot of other ones, they want to go across the top uh, instead of behind it. This is one of the few that actually goes behind it uh, and did make a huge difference as far as the chassis rigidity was concerned. So uh, we do have the Perrin master cylinder brace. I don't know if that one was on in the last video or not. Like I said, it's been a couple of years, so um, I don't know if it's been on there or not. But Perrin Master Cylinder Brace does have a Grim Speed uh, air oil separator, which is great for a daily driver. I know some people will say that IAG or Crawford or Perrin or whoever is better than the Grim Speed. But if you're using the vehicle as a daily driver, which this car is, uh, this is actually a very good unit. If you're not racing it all the time, you'll get very similar performance out of this and not have any issues. So um, that's something there. Uh, underneath, you can't really see it, but it's down there. It's the HKS equal length manifold. So it doesn't have Subaru rumble anymore. Uh, Mishimoto radiator, you can see right there. Uh, so that's basically a one and a half or almost a two uh, two core, double core size radiator compared to the factory. So um, definitely helps with the cooler temperatures, uh, the cooling temperatures, uh, especially here in Florida. Perrin radiator shroud piece, more for show than anything, but I guess if it does do some performance, it's probably something. Uh, and then after that, uh, it's the same downpipe, the three inch Catless downpipe that has been on the car for a while and the Perrin, uh, which you can't really see too well, but it does have a Perrin turbo heat shield right there. Perrin turbo heat shield on it. And a lot of stuff beyond this is suspension stuff that you can't really see. Uh, underneath the front, it does have a uh, Perrin 25 millimeter adjustable front sway bar with Cartboy end links and a Megan Racing front lower H brace. And then we'll go to the back of the car, which is interesting. And we'll get under there, and you can see some of the stuff underneath here. So it's got the white line uh, sway bar mount braces. We have a 24 millimeter adjustable rear sway bar with Cartboy end links. We also have a Megan Racing uh, rear uh, subframe brace. That's what it is, rear subframe brace and some white line rear diff bushings back there as well. Um, so that's kind of a, a walk around. And you know, some of the, as it's like, probably like 90 something, 100 degrees out here right now. So I'm gonna get in the shade. Um, so, God, it's hot. So uh, some of the stuff that you'll see, I, I have a lot of suspension component stuff that I've put on this car. And part of the reason for it is I started to do these driving events and I really started to notice how important it was that uh, handling and braking uh, is for a vehicle. So the power, eh, not so much. 
uh, focused a lot more on the uh, you know the handling, the suspension, the chassis bracing, things of that nature. Um, some things that I also didn't mention, it does have a Torque Solutions um, steering dampener lockdown kit on the car, which made a huge, huge difference. You want to talk about like cheap mod that'll make a huge difference in the way the car drives? Definitely worth it. Every single way, it's worth it. Um, let me put this back on the tripod here. It's because everything works better with the tripod. All right. Raise it up just a little bit here. All right. Let me get over here because I'm getting blinded. All right. So, uh, so some of the stuff that's on the car, I focused a lot of attention on the uh, the way that the car drives in as far as its balance is concerned. Um, I wanted to have a car that had enough power to it, which it's running a torque performance uh, stage three tune. I hate using stage tune, so I'm just gonna call it an e-tune because essentially I talked to Eric, the tuner over at Torque Performance, and he said this is what he would recommend. So it's still stock turbo, it's still stock BF52, it's a stock EJ255 engine. Um, but it does have an upgraded fuel pump. It's got an AM340 fuel pump on it. Uh, obviously the um, Grim Speed 3-port boost control solenoid, the intercooler that's on it, everything that's on the car uh, matches their stage three um, tuning. But what Eric does is he actually fine tunes it. It is stifling hot right now. I just want you, you all to know. Um, it's it fit his stage three tuning, but what he does is he sends you a base map and then he specifically dials it in to how your car is performing with the fuel, the elevation, the outside air temperature, everything uh, for your specific vehicle. So uh, it's really an e-tune that's on it. I, I hate to use a stage tune, but uh, it's, it's really an e-tune that's on there. Um, but everything that's on the car has made such a huge difference, even from the tune, everything uh, with this thing is just fantastic. So, um, but the major thing that I've done over the past, what, two years since I did my last video was maintenance. Maintenance is key on these cars. Now this car has about 123,000 miles on it now, um, but it drives like a brand new car. The suspension is all brand new. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention, it has STI front lower control arms on it. Uh, why? Because the original control arms, the bushings were worn out and I needed to replace them. So I threw some STI uh, lower front lower control arms on them. And that also made a pretty substantial difference in the way that the car handles because the control arms are longer. So it's a little bit wider track in the front. Um, and what it actually did was it actually squared up the wheels because actually the, 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 the base, when we measured it uh, before putting them on, the base on the front was actually narrower than it was on the rear. And when you look at the car aesthetically, it looks like the rear is sunk in from the front, but it's actually not. The whole car is actually squared up now uh, thanks to the front lower control arms that are on it. So a lot of upgrades but also a lot of maintenance. So there was uh, timing belt jobs, there were uh, new spark plugs that were thrown in it, new coolant, new fluids uh, frequently. Um, we've also done induction service on it, professional induction service to make sure that the uh, fuel injectors were clean, that the intake system was clean, the throttle body, everything's clean on the car. Um, so that all ran like new before I even tuned it. And then um, adding like the air oil separator to uh, to kind of make sure that we weren't running into any of those issues as far as knock is concerned uh, was was also a huge thing. Um, having the STI six speed transmission in it was another big upgrade that was also kind of a maintenance thing because I needed a new clutch in it. So uh, threw an STI transmission in with the clutch. So I mean just everything on this car, even going through and checking for vacuum leaks, uh, this car drives, in my opinion, and I've driven brand new STIs, this car drives better 
right now than a brand new STI. And this car has 123,000 miles on it. The only reason why I won't say that it drives better is the steering rack is still a WRX steering rack. It's not an STI steering rack, so it's not a, a closer ratio. Um, so that kind of hinders its performance just a little bit. Uh, but with how responsive it is, thanks to that, that steering dampener on it, uh, it really makes up a world of difference as far as its response is concerned. So um, that's kind of a huge thing. And then, um, like I said, just really focusing on whatever I can do to maintenance this thing uh, has been vitally important. So, um, you know, kind of a, a tough road that this car has been on. Uh, you know, I, I took a year where I was basically driving another vehicle to fix that car and to make it so that it, it runs and drives the way that it does today and even with how it looks today uh, was, was vitally important to me. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of a follow through on what's been going on with the car, all the upgrades that are done to it. Um, and again, I mean, I just, I'll be honest with you, I just love this thing. I know it's gonna drown me out here. I know I probably could just edit the video, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I just, I love the way that the car looks as it sits right now. It is just, in my opinion, for a narrow body, it has become a thing of beauty. And that's one of the reasons why I've fallen in love with this car is it has become something that I didn't think was even possible. And I get so many compliments for this car, even though it's a narrow body, I get so many compliments for this car um, that, you know, from its performance and how quick it is to also its aesthetics and how it looks. And that's one of the reasons why I just hold on to this car and it drives. And I'll do a driving video later on uh, to show you guys what it's like driving this thing, uh, the sounds and whatnot, but it is just absolutely amazing and to me, absolutely beautiful. And how it compares to my old car, as much as I loved my old GD uh, WRX, this car, performance-wise, blows it out of the water. Practicality-wise, it blows it out of the water. Looks-wise, not so much, but it has looks in a different way. Um, it's aggressive yet elegant at the same time, and that's one of the reasons why it's so unique to so many people uh, with how it looks. And then, obviously, it's performance modifications. It's tastefully done. It's not overly modified, but it's just tastefully done. And I think that's what a lot of people appreciate about this car, is it just it looks right, it performs right, it drives right. You could easily drive this car every single day as a daily driver. It won't break your back. Uh, it won't be too much for you to handle, but yet you can still have fun with it. It still performs really well. Um, you know, we've, we've done a lot to it and we're just extremely happy with it. And like I said, it's just, it's so practical and it's fun to drive. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, Hope you guys like the updates that have been done to this car. Uh, not a whole lot of, of <laughs> cheap mods have been thrown on this. Uh, it's, everything has been tastefully done using the right parts, uh, getting the right stuff done. Um, so that's kind of the update for this, this car and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And thank you for watching. Click that like, subscribe. Uh, I'm going to do some more videos here soon. And uh, thank you again for watching.